So this agent connects directly to your Xero tenant. It's like having a financial advisor or maybe a junior accountant that you can chat with directly about your business finances and get a more or less instant response as opposed to perhaps a, an asynchronous email chain where you're waiting for a response or perhaps you phone your accountant and they take some time to phone back to you. Let's dive over and have a look at the agent and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm over here in my NA10 instance and I've got an AI tools agent connected up to a demo zero tenant in this case via zero's MCP server and I've got a query in my clipboard here so let's paste that in. Please review my PNL and point out any anomalies good or bad over the past six months. So let's just let that run and see what amazing insights it comes with, up with about our demo business. Okay awesome so that's coming in at 47 seconds just under a, just under a minute. And let's have a very quick brief over what it's found. So straight out the gate, it's found some significant red flags. We've had a massive spike in sales here in July, and it's a 380% increase, and then a heavy loss in June. So I'm not going to go ahead and read everything that it's found out for us verbatim, but as you can see, it's got some interesting insights from our zero tenant data, and it's laid it out really nicely. So red flags first, and then some uh, inconsistencies, and perhaps moderate issues second, and then some more positive stuff at the bottom. Now, the issue with creating uh, actually meaningful zero workflows in the past has been that although these low-code tools do often have native zero integration, and in this case NA10 does, and I've put this node down here, uh, that native integration is often limited. So if I click into this node, and you'll see that the resources that I can act against is only invoices, which includes invoices and bills, or contacts, otherwise I have to make a custom API call. And even within those resources that I can interact with, so let's say invoice for example, I know from experience that there's some limitations within that. So I can't attach the actual invoice, the file, to the invoice that I create via the native node. And that leaves us with custom HTTP nodes all over the place and reading API documentation for hours. And so it's quite cumbersome to actually create a meaningful workflow for Xero. Now with the Xero MCP server, and I'll quickly show you in the logs here what's gone on, from my query, what's the AI, agent, AI agent's been able to do is list the available tools, which is essentially, or well, kind of like API calls, but the MCP server is making them on our behalf. And once it's seen what tools are available to it, it's selected a tool to use and used the execute node here. So it's executed the tool profit and loss. And that makes sense because I asked it to review our PNL. I've just done a quick query offline here, which is what was the last invoice that I issued? And it's come back with inv0043 for client boom fm and the reason i did that extra query is because i just wanted to show you that this data is genuinely coming from a zero tenant not just something i made up so I dive into zero here and you can see i'm in the demo company and the last invoice was for boom fm and inv4043 the other thing i wanted to quickly cover is i could set up an mcp server if you're familiar with automation i could set this up for claude desktop or maybe cursor and i could just chat with zero and equally i could actually take action so i could create contacts or create invoices through claude desktop and it begs the question why go to the trouble of trying to get this set up in na10 and the answer is basically this because na10 is a automation workflow tool it gives me much more control and flexibility and I can place this AI tools agent and the MCP server within a wider workflow uh, or I could limit the tools that it is available to it. I don't have to give it dynamic access to all the tools. It just really gives me a lot more control. It's a lot more powerful. That being said, let's get into the actual details of the setup, what you're going to need and how to build this for yourself. So I'm over here in the hybrid AI community and the reason I'm here is because I've already written up the documentation for how to get this set up for you and I've also included the JSON file so you can just import the workflow that you've already seen in the demo. If you haven't already signed up, I highly recommend you do. It's cheap as chips to sign up and it will save you loads of time if you're following along with these videos to just download the file and import it and then all you have to do is wire up the actual credentials. Now that being said, let's take a very quick look at the prerequisites and then we'll dive back over to NA10 and actually build it out. But before we get started, I need to point out that I'm using a self-hosted version of NA10 and to get this working, I believe that you do need a self-hosted version of NA10. It's just the way that the MCP server authentication is 
it works in the native nodes, it doesn't suit the needs here. The second thing, once you've got a self-hosted instance of NA10, is you need to turn on a couple of environment switches. And this will be dependent on how you have self-hosted. So I'm self-hosting on an Ubuntu Linux machine. If you've self-hosted in a Docker container or Elestio or hosting it, it will be slightly different for you. So just look up the relevant documentation to your hosting environment. And once you've got the environment flags turned on, which I should actually tell you what they are. So NA10 community nodes enabled needs to be true. And also you need to allow those community nodes to be used as tools. So NA10 community packages allow tool usage equals true. And once you've got those prerequisites set up back in NA10, you should see under the settings. So I'll just go back so you can see how I get there. So under settings here and then community nodes, if you've got them turned on, you'll see the community nodes and I've already installed the community node that I need here. But if you hit install and just literally paste in the NA10-nodes-mcp and install that, then you'll have that available to you when you want to build your workflow. Okay, so we've got our system prerequisites in place. The final thing that we're going to need is a credential to actually connect to Zero. So let's jump over to Zero, and I've already signed in to developer.zero.com. So if you haven't, then just go ahead and sign in. And I've already got an app connected here, but let's connect a new app for the purposes of our MCP server because they're a different application type. So I'm going to hit new app here. I'm going to call it MCP demo just so I remember to delete it. Choose a custom connection and I'm going to go with HTTPS localhost and I've read the terms and conditions. So let's create the app and I've got an error here and it's a bit of a weird one. I've found that if I try and reuse some of these URLs that I've used before, it gives me an error. So I'm just going to put like a D on the end and hopefully that will let me save it. And it does. Okay, and now we need to uh, select some scopes for our MCP server. And there is some documentation from Zero on this. So what I'll do is just open a new tab because the scopes do change. So if you're just to copy exactly what I do in a month or two or three from now, it might not be correct. So I want to show you where to find the information. Okay, so I'm in the GitHub for the MCP server on Zero's GitHub. I'll put this the link to this in the show notes so that you can find it yourself. But basically, just if you scroll down a bit, there's this line here which explains that currently the following scopes are required for all sessions. And you can click through this link. And it takes you straight to the line here, 91, but to be honest, it's actually on line 93. But it takes you to the general area where the scopes that are required are. So I'm just going to copy those onto my other screen. So onto a notepad and then we'll go back over to our application that we've set up and we'll give it the scopes that we've just copied. So bear with me, that is accounting.transactions, accounting.contacts and accounting.settings and accounting.reports.read all, accounting.reports.read, there we go and payroll.settings, employees, and timesheets. So here we go, payroll.settings, timesheets, and employees. So seven scopes in total at the moment. And hit save and connect. That's going to send an email to me. So I'm just, going to, I'm just going to go grab the link to verify that authentication from my email. Okay, so I've copied the link from the email that I've received. And I'm just going to open a, a new tab here and paste that in. Now it wants me to select an organization to connect and I'm only going to be able to connect it to my demo organization at this stage. The reason is for a custom connection, you need to pay a subscription to connect it to a real company data. And I think it's pretty cheap. I think it's like $10 a month or something like that. It's relatively reasonable. So I'm just going to allow access to the demo company for the purposes of this demo, funnily enough. And that's now connected. And if I go back to the application itself and just refresh that screen, you'll see that those scopes have been authorized. Now I need a couple of things from here. So I need the client ID. So I'm just going to copy that onto my notepad on the other screen. And I'm going to generate a secret. And I'll copy that onto my notepad on the other screen. And that should be good to go as far as the application is concerned. So let's go over to NA10 and start building out our workflow. So I'll just hit create workflow and I give it an arbitrary name. So MCP 
zero demo, so I know to delete that later. Now, as always, the easiest thing to do is to get the templates for these workflows from the Hybrid AI community. But if you've not signed up to the community, don't worry too much. You should be able to uh, follow along. I'll go into the nodes so you can build it yourself. It's just a lot faster to get the JSON template from the community here. So from the explainer that we we're looking at earlier, at the bottom, there's this link, zero MCP agent. Just click on that and download the JSON file. And then back in NA10, you can hit the ellipsis, import from file and choose the file that you downloaded. And we've got our workflow. So I'm gonna go into each node and quickly explain, starting with the chat node, which I don't wanna labor or go into, I guess, too much, because for me, that's just a way to trigger and demo it. This could be connected to Telegram or WhatsApp, or this agent could be called by another agent. So the trigger is probably less important. But the, the next thing we've got is the AI tools agent. And as we usually do, I've given the tools agent a system message, and it's a really basic system message. So I'll quickly show you the system message so you can copy it, but I really believe that you can improve upon it. I was just doing a minimum viable product. I'm really just explaining to the agent that you've got this zero list tools tool to find out which other tools are available, and then to use the uh, execute tool to complete or fulfill the user's query and it's really as simple as that i'm sure you can make a better prompt there but this seems to do the job for now and then i've connected the ai agent to a large language model uh, as always or as is required actually and i'm not going to labor the point about getting an api key for your open ai or in this case it's an open router chat model because I talk about, or all YouTubers talk about this in nearly every video. So watch almost any of my other videos and they'll explain to you how to get this uh, open API key uh, wired up. And quite similar for the memory. This is just uh, not strictly speaking required, but gives your conversation some co context and some memory. And I've got the default here of five and that could be, let's just make it 10 and it will remember 10 of our messages. The really interesting piece here is the MCP tool nodes, and I want to point out a few things. So let's first of all point out the native node. So when you add a tool, by default, you can see this native MCP client tool. It's a bit confusing because if I search for MCP, MCP client tool has the same name. This is the community one, and you can tell because it's got this little box here beside it. If you choose the native node, you'll see that you only get this SSE endpoint and some basic bearer and header authentication options, which is not suitable for most MCP servers that are out there today. And I'll just show you the difference. So if I go into the MCP community tool, which is this one here with the box, you can see that I've got a more familiar credential window. And if I want to create a new credential, I've got these sort of several options, including SSE, uh, but I've got these other options. And in our case, this STDIO is the one that we're going to need and most MCP servers need. So that's why we needed the community uh, nodes. I'm going to get rid of that and just look at the nodes that I've already configured. So the first one here, as per the system message, is the zero list tools. Now, the default settings here, so I've got operation list tools and tool description automatic. The, the thing that I found kind of fiddly to get set up, and I suppose now that I know how, it's easy, but the credential I found a bit fiddly. So what I'm going to do is just edit this credential and show you. In the command, you just put npx. In the arguments, we've got this, uh, it's a space-separated argument, so it's slightly different from what the documentation looks like in the GitHub. Now, the reason for that is the documentation in the GitHub is targeted towards setting it up for Claude Desktop. So NA10 just interprets things a bit differently. So we've got dash Y and then the MCP server. And then finally, in the environment variables, this is where the client ID and secret come in. And ignore the tooltip here because the tooltip tells you that it is comma separated. And I think so does the zero GitHub documentation. Now, this should actually be line separated and that's what's kind of confusing i'll paste it in here so you can see not too worried about the api key because about the client secret because it will be deleted before this video gets edited but it's just basically like that so zero client id enter over here make sure there's no white space or it won't work and then zero client secret there 
So let's save that. And this tool you can run without actually feeding in a chat trigger and it doesn't even need to connect to zero. It's really just making sure that you've got your formatting correct. So if I execute this step just to list the tools back, that will tell me the formatting's correct. And then we'll have a look at the final node. Cool, and because it's responded and told me the tools that are available, at least the formatting's correct. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that my client secret or ID itself is correct, but it's a good start. So then the, the other tool here is the execute tool. Now, again, I've got tool description automatically using the same credential, operation execute tool. The interesting thing here is the tool name. So we're using the expression from AI tool and then this is just a description the selected tool to use to execute that's because i want the ai agent to dynamically choose the tool that it's going to run and finally the tool parameters i it's basically the same thing here but there's a little button for me to fill in so i'll just hit the button to use the from ai which is more or less the same okay so once you've got all that set up you should be good to go let's save that and we will run a test why don't we just see if we can get the same invoice that we got earlier so please tell me the latest invoice i issued and hopefully if we've got everything wired up it will tell us the same invoice as we looked at earlier awesome so it's exactly what i was hoping for or expecting it's found invoice 0043 for company Boom FM, just like we did before, so it's all working. Look, I found it quite fiddly to get this set up in the first place, but hopefully this helps you cut to the chase and build some awesome workflows using Zero's MCP server. Until next time, have a good one.